Welcome to Dr. Beatty's Chemistry Essentials, A-Level Chemistry Made Easy. In this video, what we're going to be doing is looking at comparing the Calculate model with the delocalized model, um, looking at its structure, and then using and explaining the experimental evidence for why we now favour the delocalized model over the Calculate model. So the empirical formula for benzene, C6H6, had been known for quite a long time. And it was known that it was highly unsaturated, so it had lots of double bonds in it. But the structure was actually a challenge. And Calcule was the first person to come with a model for this in the late 19th century. Um, and the story goes that he basically had a dream and he could see basically atoms Combolling before my eyes, twisting and twining in a snake-like motion. Um, and he pictured these snakes basically seizing its own tail. And so he came up with a model of a cyclic system. And to account for the connectivity, carbon obviously always needs four bonds around it, and also the fact that it's highly unsaturated, this is where the alternating double bonds fit in. So we have double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond. And that was Calculet's structure. Now, Calculet knew that the ring was planar, so had bond angles of 120 around each of the carbon atoms. And so this exists in a three-dimensional plane. So imagine this axis is going across and this is coming towards us. We can see that the carbon ring in this more skeletal diagram, looks like so. And then if we drew in the orbitals, the p orbitals through to these carbons on this diagram, so there's our first p orbital. Remember, it collectively is a p orbital. I'm gonna draw all the other ones in now. And so we've got six p orbitals for each of the carbons. And if we just quickly number the carbons on each of the diagrams, then if Calculate structure was true, then we would only see overlap of the p orbitals to make a pi bond between carbon 1 and 2, which is here. There'll be no overlap between carbons 2 and 3, because there's a single bond here. So we, there's no overlap there. Then we have a double bond between 3 and 4. So we're going to take the two p orbitals and combine them into another pi bond. And you'll notice then we've got a second pi bond. We've got always above and below the ring in each of these cases. And then between four and five, you can see here it's a single bond. So there'll be no overlap. And then five and six, there's a double bond. So we're going to overlap these p orbitals to make that pi bond. So we've had a set of p orbitals that overlap to form pi bonds. But because these pi bonds are localized between specific carbons, then we need to make a note of this in the structure for Calculate. When we say localised, we mean that they are kept in between specific carbons here. So this pi bond is always between carbons 1 and 2, because the double bond is between carbons 1 and 2. Just to highlight some key features of Calculate's model before we start to look at the um, better fit delocalised model, we have bond angles of 120 degrees. It's planar. But importantly, there's pi bonds that are localised, which come from p orbitals that overlap. Now, with advances in technology, there was uh, the processing of an electron density map for the C6H6 ring system. And what they found was, first of all, that the electrons are spread out so there's not just double bonds between fixed locations and they also found that the bond lengths between all the carbons were exactly the same and we're going to come back to this in a bit but those two pieces of information basically produced the delocalized model of benzene so right now we've got our c6h6 ring system um, and this time what's going to change is the the unsaturated nature of benzene. So first of all, I just want you to picture having the double bonds between the same areas in the Calculate model. But then I want you to imagine that this double bond here can move into this double bond here. So it can shuttle to the side. 
And furthermore, this can move into there and then this can move into there. And so the new product that you'd get is those double bonds being shifted. So what, where this used to be a double bond, it's now a single bond and vice versa. This used to be a single bond, it's a double bond and this keeps going around. So we can take that double bond and we can shift it once again in this circular motion, this double bond into there, that double bond into there. And if we draw the product to this, and this keeps occurring. And so this shuttling keeps occurring. So we are delocalizing these pi bonds across the whole ring system. Instead of constantly drawing this shuttling, we show this in a delocalized structure. So we're going to draw these three double bonds spread across the six carbons. And you can see, then we get this circular ring within the ring system. Now, just like the calculate model, these carbon atoms are in a trigonal planar geometry. So they have a bond angle of 120 degrees. And if we, because of this, because they're planar, the whole ring system is also planar, just like before in Calculate. So I'm going to draw this below. And obviously each carbon represented here on each of the edges of this ring, being these carbons here, has a p orbital. But this time, instead of carbons 1 and 2 solely being connected, it's also there's a connection between two and three because of this constant shuttling. And this goes forward between three and four, four and five, five and six, and then all the way back between six and one. And so we have what's known as a delocalized pi system above and below the ring. And the way we show this is by actually showing that all of these combine to form a system above and all of these combine form a system below. So once again, some really important things and features about the delocalized system. Firstly, it's 120 degrees, exactly the same as the calculate if you were asked to compare. It's planar, and again, exactly like calculate. But the big difference is that when the p orbitals overlap, we have a delocalized system. And it's this feature here that explains why a lot of the evidence has supported this model to be the correct one. So in these simplified structures, you can see we've got our pi bond that are localized in the calculator system, but then our carbon ring here shows a pi system above and a pi system below. And these are the skeletal views of both of these different structures. Now, the first bit of evidence we're going to look at is bond lengths. Now, in this calculate structure, what you would imagine to expect is you would have three single bonds, CC single bonds, and they have a bond length of 0.154 nanometers. And then the other carbon-carbon bonds are going to be carbon-carbon double bonds. And these are going to be shorter because there's a stronger bond, so they're more attracted to one another. So they get closer together and they have a bond length of 0.134 nanometers. And so to summarize, you're expecting different bond lengths, depending on whether it's carbon, carbon, single bond or carbon, carbon, double bond. However, when they actually looked at the bond lengths in benzene, what they actually found is the bond lengths were 0.140. And importantly, this size of 0.140 was for every CC bond in benzene. Now you'll notice that 0.140 is somewhere in between a CC single bond and a CC double bond. Now the next piece of evidence is found in the enthalpy of hydrogenation. So this is the energy required to add hydrogen to our structure. Now if we look at the calculate model, we have basically three double bonds in a cyclic system. So if we first of all work out how much it is energy wise to hydrogenate a double bond, a singular double bond in a cyclic structure like cyclohexene, then the product of that is going to be cyclohexane. And the enthalpy of this reaction works out to be minus 120 kilojoules per mole. So if we apply this model system of cyclohexene to calculate, then because we've got three double bonds in here, we're going to have to do this process three times to completely hydrogenate 
our calculate model of benzene. So we would expect the overall transformation of this hydrogenation of benzene to be minus 360 kilojoules per mole. If it were as simple as there being just three double bonds in benzene. However, when you hydrogenate benzene in the lab, then what you actually get is the value of minus 208. And the reason for this is the delocalization. Now this delocalization and the pi system above and below the ring in complete conjugation makes it a lot more stable compared to this structure here where you have just three double bonds that aren't intertwined and forming a whole system together. So if something is more stable compared to this version, then if we were to just sketch out a energy profile, then this structure here is less stable, so it'll be higher up on our y-axis compared to this structure that is more stable, so it'll be lower down. Because these drawings are small, I'm just going to label them up. So there we have structure one, which is the calculate structure, higher energy, and then we have the more stable delocalized structure here, which is this structure here. So the hydrogenation, as you can see in both cases, they're both exothermic because they've got a negative sign. And so we're creating something that is even more stable. And then we just put in the values here. So obviously the gap here is a lot larger, which is minus 360 taken from this value. And then our more stable benzene is worth minus 208, so a smaller gap which comes from our enthalpy change of reaction here. Now the third piece of evidence is to do with the types of reactions benzene undergoes. And this will lead into the reactions of benzenes in subsequent videos. So if you took calculate structure, we have three double bonds here. So three alkene functional groups. So the types of reaction that we would imagine this would undergo is an electrophilic addition. And so if we took bromine and reacted it, say, with this double bond here between these two carbons, then we would be expecting to add bromine onto both this carbon and this carbon if benzene were to be like the calculate structure and have these localized pi systems. However, we don't see this product here. We don't see this dibromo substituted product. Instead, if we take the delocalized model and treat that with bromine and something else called a halogen carrier, so in this case we're going to, just going to use iron tribromide. More about this in following videos. It's worth noting at this stage, if we used iron tribromide here as well, you still wouldn't get the dibromo product. So it's not that this is causing a shift in like change of reactivity. But what you actually end up getting is only a monobrominated product. So one of the carbons, obviously this is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter, ends up getting a bromine on. And you get a hydrogen bromide as your byproduct. This is catalytic, so it gets regenerated. Again, there'll be more about this mechanism in the next set of videos. Now this is a new type of mechanism. It's called an electrophilic substitution. And it's worth noting the difference here is the addition and the substitution. In order hi to highlight the difference between the addition and the substitution, we just need to look at the hydrogens that are involved here. So if I draw the hydrogens on our calculate structure and then draw this in the product also, you can see that the bromines have just added into these carbons here, so it's lost the double bond and the hydrogen still remain. Makes an addition reaction, and this is um, similar to obviously the mechanism from year one for alkene. Whereas in the substitution setup, we take benzene and add in the hydrogens there then what happens is a mechanism that we will explore in another video. The bromine adds into this carbon and substitutes the hydrogen that was there. So this hydrogen here in HBr has actually come from this 
carbon-hydrogen bond here where the bromine has been replaced. Now, just to summarise, so you can get this down as a key point, is you need to tell the examiner that benzene does not undergo electrophilic addition reactions, has a reluctance to do so, and instead it goes via the electrophilic substitution reaction because the delocalised system, which is very stable, is not broken in the consequent product. Whereas if we took this model and did an electrophilic addition reaction on it um, and added bromine onto this carbon and this carbon, then these carbons here are still within the ring system because they're all trigonal planar. They only have three areas of electron density around them. So we can draw that in. But because these two carbons have four areas of electron density around them, they're tetrahedral, therefore they have no p orbitals. That therefore means that they can't add any p orbitals to a, a, the pi system. So this ring basically breaks down after this carbon here and this carbon here. So it's only over these four carbon atoms and not these two. So you've actually disrupted the delocalized pi system in benzene if you take this mode of bromination, which is the electrophilic addition mode. And we know this doesn't form. So all of this evidence of monobrominated supports keeping the delocalized pi system intact and electrophilic substitution and the delocalized ring. So just to conclude, the evidence is, first of all, all bond lengths are the same for the delocalized system. Second piece of evidence is the enthalpy of hydrogenation supports the delocalized system. And thirdly, the reluctance of the delocalized system to undergo electrophilic addition and instead undergoing electrophilic substitution reactions also shows the stability of the ring of a delocalized pi system. And so just ensure that you learn these three pieces of evidence to explain why we use the delocalized model over the calculate model. So now let's try and attempt to apply some of this to an exam style question. So pause the video here and have a go at answering this four marker. Okay, so your answer first of all should include that both structure A and B involves p orbitals overlapping to form pi bonds. The second mark is then for saying that the pi bonds are delocalized in structure B. And then the third mark is to comment that in structure A, the pi bonds are localized between two carbons. And then the fourth and final mark is using the suitable diagrams to show orbital overlap. Because it's asking for orbital overlap and not just orbitals, we're, trying, we're showing here the pi bonds that we've been talking about. So here we have three sets of pi bonds in structure A, the calculate structure. The first one being here, always show a pi cloud above and then below the ring, and that's one pi bond altogether. And then the other two we're gonna put in now. And then structure B is delocalized. There we have one pi cloud above the ring, and then we're drawing one below the ring. And that would account both those diagrams for your fourth mark. Here's an example of another exam question. Um, pause the video now and have a go at this four marker. Okay, so here structure one is our delocalized, structure two our calculate, and we've been asked to compare and explain the bond angles and bond lengths. So we're explaining that in both structures one and two, we have three areas of electron density around each carbon atom of the ring. This idea leads to basically a bond angle of 120 degrees because with three areas around a central atom you get the trigonal planar geometry. And then in bond lengths, structure one, the delocalized structure, all bond lengths are the same. Whereas in structure two, the C double bond C bond lengths are shorter than the C single bond C. And that's our four marks altogether. On the back of this, you've got this two marker. So just pause the video here, 
Remember, structure one is the delocalized structure, whereas structure two is the calculase structure. Have a go. Okay, so you've been given some information here. You've been given cyclohexene uh, with reacting with hydrogen, and that process, the enthalpy of that is minus 120. So if it was structure two, as we've seen previously, we would expect this to be three hydrogenations of alkenes in a ring system. So we would expect the value to be 120 times three, so minus 360 kilojoules per mole. But as you were told in the question, the actual enthalpy change for benzene is minus 208. And this lower enthalpy supports the fact that we have structure one, the actual delocalized structure, due to the delocalized ring being more stable. And so that's our second mark there. So this concludes our video and we've looked at the calculator model and the delocalized model and talked about the P orbital overlap and the pi system and then looked at the experimental evidence, those three pieces of information and how it actually supports our delocalized model over the calculator model. If you found this video useful, ensure that you like the video and ensure that you subscribe to Dr. Beatty's Chemistry Essentials channel so that you get all the updated videos as and when they come.